Hello everyone. Hope we are all doing good. Let's get started. I am Ismail Sharif, an internationally published and exhibited nature and wildlife conservation photographer, global wildlife photography expedition leader, a conservation photographer with Snow Leopard Trust, a Snow Leopard expert at Voyager Expeditions, and a certified fine art printmaker. It's been my pursuit of happiness to be able to document snow leopards so extensively and categorically, pieces of which I intend to share with you all today. Snow leopards, Panthera uncia, also known as Shan in Himachal Pradesh and Ladakh, Barwani cheetah, and Sheen Esu in Jammu and Kashmir, Irbis in Russian-speaking Central Asia, and Xie Ba in China. Snow leopards are these mysterious beings from the mountains about whom not much was known for a very long time. In fact, the first ever picture of a snow leopard in the wild was taken only as recent as 1970 from Chitral in Pakistan by Dr. George B. Scheller. This same photo was later published in the November 1971 edition of National Geographic with the title First Photographs of Snow Leopards in the Wild. Snow leopards are not very big cats, but the terrain and mountains that they dwell in makes it very difficult to know more about them. They are built for the mountains, the snow, the blizzards. Their large nasal cavity, big paws, and very thick fur make it the ideal predator of the mountains. Their color variations based on their habitat with the rosettes and their ability to merge in their surroundings make it a master of camouflage. Can you spot the snow leopard in this picture? They disappear right in front of you. I photographed this old male in Spiti region in January 2017, and these pictures have triggered a whole new era of snow leopard photography in that region. See how comfortable they are even in a blizzard. It was minus 30 centigrade when I was filming this. Let's try one more time. How many snow leopards can you see in this picture? Yes, four snow leopards. A mating pair on the bottom right, one cub on the top right, and one cub on the top left. This is why they are so difficult to spot in the wild. This is exactly why you need a trained eye and a lot of experience to be able to spot the snow leopards in the wild. Now how effective the camouflage is, let's have a look at this video. Did you notice the movement of its tail? And did you also notice how close it was to the female ibex before she even got to see him? Snow leopards have a long fluffy tail, which is just about as long as its body. It serves multiple purposes for balance when it's running behind its prey as a muffler when it's sleeping or resting and also like all cats a toy for their kittens and cubs and yes the snow leopards cannot roar but they do purr hiss growl yowl and chuff 
Another astonishing fact about this rock star is that it can jump up to 50 feet. Yes, you heard that right. The gestation period of snow leopards is about 101 days and after that the cubs are with the mother for the next 18 to 21 months which is the longest duration for any of the cats in the world. Snow leopards are found in 12 countries Afghanistan, Bhutan, China, India, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz Republic, Mongolia, Nepal, Pakistan, Russian Federation, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. In India, they are found in Arunachal Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Sikkim, and Uttarakhand. They are estimated to be around 4,000 to 7,000 in number, with China having just about half the population at around 2,000 to 2,500. India has anywhere between 400 to 450. The mountainous terrain and extreme temperatures make it very difficult to come to a certain number of these beautiful beings. The three most important prey species for the snow leopards are Bharal or blue sheep, Asiatic ibex, and Argali. But they also make a quick meal of other ungulates, pika, marmots, woolly hares, and at times even some birds. I have also filmed the first ever record of a snow leopard cub snacking on a golden eagle. I am writing a paper on this along with Mr. Kostab Sharma from Snow Leopard Trust. Other than this, of course, they do target livestock, which is one of the main reasons for man-animal conflict. Thankfully, there are many NGOs who are working along with the Forest Department in India who work on mitigating this issue with the locals, making them a part of the conservation efforts and coming up with compensation schemes has helped immensely in containing the threat to the snow leopards. One of the main threats, though, still is poaching. For making of coats, mufflers and medicine from its fur, bones and meat. Another issue with a possible long-term adverse effect on snow leopards is baiting, though it's not very common in India. Another of the more successful ways is snow leopard tourism. It has proved to be of great help to the locals in places where it is being diligently managed and monitored. With snow leopard tourism, especially in the most recent places, overcrowding and excessive vehicle movement will need to be controlled for a longer lasting positive effect of tourism. Eventually, every area or region where snow leopards are found have its advantages and disadvantages, and what works in one place might not work in another. This is where institutions like Snow Leopard Trust, Nature Conservation Foundation, and Global Snow Leopard and Ecosystem Protection Programs, the GSLEP, come in handy, who work in tandem with the local forest department to achieve their similar goals, which is the upkeep of the natural environment and conservation of the apex species, which in turn helps in conserving the other species of that region. Hoping that all these efforts play a more positive role in the near future. Thank you for being a part of this wonderful and educational initiative by the Ministry of Tourism India. Thank you very much.